denizens of the internet, this is Kira Una coming to you today. We're doing something slightly different. We're going to actually be doing some history bounding in this case. To see how this was made, let's get started, shall we? So we're going to start off with our fabric selections. The first off is we have a wool twill weave, and we also have a silk shangtung taffeta as our two main fabrics for both the outer shell and the lining. So the first thing we're going to do is print out and read the instructions. While we read the instructions, we're going to grab our cuppa. This time around, it is a matcha latte. Next, we're going to take our fabrics, lay them out, set up the pattern pieces, and cut out both our outer shell and our lining pieces. Our next step is we're going to mark out all of our seam allowances as we're going to be turning all of those in towards the project and sewing this all by hand. We will be using a combination of the English stitch as well as the ladder stitch for most of this project. Where I started with was I did the English stitch on the gussets or the gores that help to make the neckline have its circular shape. This portion where I'm pointing out is where the T-section to the lure pipe joins, which I've reinforced so that it doesn't get pulled. This is the section where I had a little bit of puckering from my hand stitching. I believe that was just my inexperience with hand sewing at the time. And this is the bottom edge all the way around the bottom of the hood, just so that you can see. And I will be top stitching this so that it lays nice and flat. The top stitching is done about a quarter inch from the edge, and I'm using an embroidery thread for that top stitching. Next, we're going to focus on the buttons. So essentially what you want to do is you want to trace out your circle, sew a running stitch all the way around the edge of that circle so you can cinch it up into a ball. But what you're going to do is you're going to take the excess before cutting it, unless you have too much, of course, you're going to stuff it inside that little ball, which makes your button. At the bottom of the button, you'll want to do a couple of whip stitches just to keep everything contained and all in place before you sew it to the hood. Next, you'll want to take those buttons figure out how many you want all the way along the edge and you're going to sew each button directly to the edge of one side of your hood. That will be your button side and then you will make a buttonhole side afterwards. To ensure that the buttons are very secure, what I had done is I used a polyester thread to start off with a couple of passes, and then I went over it with a silk thread to not only give it a little bit of shine, but also to give it a little bit of added strength. I also wrapped around the shank of the button just so that it has a really good secure hold and it avoids wear and tear. Next, I'm going to mark my buttonholes. Each buttonhole is about an inch in length. I'm going to cut each one open with a buttonhole chisel. Lastly, I'm going to sew all of those buttonholes open with a buttonhole stitch. This will prevent the buttonholes from fraying and make sure it's very secure. And I'm going to be using a silk thread to do so. Now that it's all done, I think it's time we took this outside to play with it in the snow.
thank you once again for joining me on this make along adventure for those of you who are interested in the pattern you can visit opus eleni's youtube page and as well as her ko-fi page and both will be in the description box down below for the pattern for this londinium hood as well as any instructions for either uh, fabrics and construction. If you happen to like what you see, please like and subscribe. Every little bit helps. Also, please note that uh, I would like to know what you're all working on. So please comment in the section down below. Uh, thank you once again. This is Kiruna. This is Kiruna's DIY, and I will see you all later. Bye.